Hey, how's it going everybody? Thanks for coming back to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Uh, something I've been working on for a little while now is this Go Box. This is a Gator case. It's a 6U. I've shoved a 7300 in here. We're going to talk more about that in the future. But I have all this stuff. Uh, I've got to wire this thing up. I'm sure anybody can throw a radio into a Go Box. But you obviously need to wire it. You need to add cool little switches and doodads for power and monitoring what you're doing. And so today on the Hammer Radio Crash Course, we're going to continue this project. Um, I'll walk you through a little bit about what I've done so far so you can see the progress uh, up to date. But, but basically, it's just a two-shelf design. I put all the radios on the bottom shelf. I'm going to have speakers and some other accessories at the top. And then there's going to be this panel, which uh, needful information is going to be. And we're going to talk a lot about this because this is something uh, I've found the more that I've been working on this. There isn't really racks designed for ham radio. I mean, yes, there are people that are making custom jobs, but this is a, a audio rack, basically. I got this through Sweetwater, and you can buy these and then you can put audio equipment into it for if you're doing, if you're like a roadie or you're running audio for a band or whatnot. And a lot of these things like this circle mount thing is these diameters are too small for the tools that we would normally use so lots to talk about thanks for watching let's get started i think the easiest way to do this to catch you all up on what's going on is to take out this bottom rack and show you how i'm going to power or wire up the power i've obviously got this west mountain radio switch which you may not know of yet so we're going to cover that too but basically it allows you to either power this from mains power ac mains power or a solar system and if any one of those cuts out it'll quickly switch back and forth without losing power to the radio pretty smart idea but this is a little bit in the weeds what is the point of all of this what is a go box and why would you want one well the idea is pretty simple a lot of people, and this kind of is something that came out of emergency preparedness, emergency comms, think of Aries, races, that kind of thing. A lot of times you need to set up in non-ideal situations, including non-ideal locations, places without power, places where um, you, know, you, you may be working out of the back of a car or set up in a park. Who knows, right? They don't have a comm center. And maybe your car isn't necessarily the best situation because you don't have the appropriate antennas or whatnot. So insert the go box. It's a idea of taking a box, uh, something that is a rack, a rack mount type system, although you can make it pretty much of anything. And a lot of people use those Pelican cases or Apache cases. But you take this box and you add radios to it, along with some redundancies like the ability to connect into the back of the radio quickly and easily, along with some kind of an antenna system, possibly a tuner, if you're gonna use a non-resonant antenna or something that needs a little bit of help. And this allows you to relatively quickly lug this out into your location and get set up because there isn't a lot of disparate parts that you have to set on a table and plug in and all that fun stuff. You, you generally have this all wired so that the only thing you have to do is supply power, either again, solar panel or mains power, and connect an antenna. At least that's the idea behind a go box. So these are incredibly popular. There's a ton of YouTube videos out there on, on building go boxes, and I'm certainly not an expert in this space at all, but I know how to play, and I like to play. So again, I'm going with a 6U rack mount. This is the Gator cases here. I got this off of Sweetwater, which is a musician supply store online. In fact, a lot of things that I bought for this channel go through Sweetwater. I bought that lens. No, not the lens. I bought the, uh, the mic pack. Uh, all my microphones for the podcast came from Sweetwater. I'm not affiliated with them. I just like their work uh, insofar as every time I buy something, somebody actually calls me, a human being, and asks how I like the product and if I needed any help. That is a level of service I have not seen in a long time, so shout out to Sweetwater. Anyway, I have all these power works things, cigarette lighter, um, a volt meter for displaying the power coming off of the batteries, an actual clicky switch. And all of these are going to go live at the top here, but, but to do that, I first really need to wire everything up in the back. Now, a, a thing that everybody loves when they watch these Go Box videos, they love to see how the wiring was done, the wiring, maintenance, all that fun stuff. So I will say right up front, I'm not an expert in this space at all. In fact, I hate wire management because it's always 
very frustrating to me. But I have some thoughts and I'm gonna do a little bit of a, an explanation on how I set up my setup right now. Before we get to that though, I'm gonna have to like clear everything out of the way and drag out this shelf. That's gonna be job number one. This power supply might not be enough. I will note, um, I'm trying to reuse as much equipment as I can, so 7300 and the Alinko D35. Some of you are like, that's not even dual band. You're right, it's not. But, but, something that is very popular in the emergency communities down here in Southern California, packet radio is still very prominent, and the D35 was made for packet radio, so that's what I'm gonna use. Step bit. Very important, so that's gonna be used. Uh, this is a rail, we might use this in the back in the future, uh, just to cover. Velcro, <laughs> the cheater's way out of situations. Zip ties are also very popular. So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna move, I'm just gonna push it all to the side, uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna pull out this bottom shelf. This isn't light. <laughs> And there's a couple of things I got to show you too, uh, because this is not, again, there, there isn't somebody like guiding how we, we do this stuff in ham radio. There's not like people that make specific products just for this kind of stuff. So we're literally repurposing gear that already exists. And I have jammed it. Oh, that's why. Is that why? I'm gonna have to take this one off too. This is also something you, you kind of like learn as you go. There's certain ways to do this the right way, certain ways to do this the easy way. Um, and I wanted to do a lot of test fitting, so I had to pull things out, put things back in, pull things out, put things back in. This is a server rack. This is a one U server rack. It is just two bolts, and you can see the, the U's, the U's, the size, um, they're actually tick marked out, so you get a really clear idea of how this is all going in. So you literally have six U vertical spaces, slices that you can put uh, in this rack. So here we go. Okay. Okay, first things first, let me, God, this is all connected, connected, okay, fine. These are uh, mobile mounted, these radios. I used mobile mounting brackets that you'd use in a car. So literally they can just stand because they're bolted from the bottom. Uh, this is the 7300 and the D35 again. What I wanted to talk about though is the, the power connectors that, that the major companies produce. Why do they do this? Why do they make it like this? Why is this so difficult? Let me explain what I mean. So, stop it. Take the 7300 for instance. The 7300 has a, not proprietary, but a special connector for power. And then a long run of cable um, to something here, and then two fuses, and then I put an Anderson's on it. Well, why not instead bring the fuses closer to the connector, closer to the things that you don't really want to have to re-mess with? That way you can just cut this to fit, because now what I'm going to have to do is, is snip it like here, and use some appreciable amount, and then snip out this metal middle portion and then splice it. Not great, uh, because I do want to keep the fuses. So that's gonna be step number one here. And I'm gonna do the same on this side. That's right, this guy is a quick disconnect. Yeah, so this is double fused, it looks like. Are there still fuses in there? Yeah, they are. And God, how many fuses does this thing have? This might not be the right power cable. I think I'm using another power cable from a different radio. Anyway, so what I did to make this mount, again, this is just um, server rack metal, center punch gonna be a friend of yours. If you don't own a center punch, go get a center punch. What a center punch does is it's spring operated. You hold it uh, where you wanna drill a hole and then you push and it'll make a punch without having to hammer, which is always nice. So I measured out where I wanted the radios uh, with the mountings and then I did a center punch and I popped a couple of holes. So the four holes are for the 7300 and the two holes for the DR35, 135. And that's trash. Okay, so let's sort out my power issues without scratching up my, my desk here. And I can just leave it like this while we do that. I'm gonna get some splices and my crimper. And of course, 
generous amounts of power pole connectors. All right, so this guy was, he's already fuse terminated. So really I just need an appropriate length and the appropriate connector, which is this guy. So I'm gonna just make a connector um, for Anderson's right, just right here. And that will go to the distribution box or block, I should say. If you don't have one of these crimpers, um, link will be in the, in the description to the Amazon store for the ham radio crash course. I suggest you get one, get yourself a supply of Anderson connectors too. So you can make your own connectors because it's very satisfying that you can just make a connector whenever you need one, like a so. So yeah, check it out. And the cool thing about this is if you go and, and make your own go box, whatever it is, uh, go bag, go box, you know, they, they make, a, again, those Apache case ones, you can just build something up with that. Well, it's kind of a mess to get it all clued together. It ends up being kind of modular. So if you wanted to say, change this out for a true VHF, UHF radio, you could, if you don't end up using the packet or, you know, I guess you could use APRS with this as well. You get the idea. So anyway, here's our first cable built. So now when we get the distribution box mounted, we'll be able to connect here and, and feed it directly. All right, so in this case, uh, same deal, we got the power connector is right here and the distro box is gonna be right there. So we don't need a lot, but this is some pretty thick wire now that I'm looking at it. I forgot how thick these, uh, these thick boy Ander um, ICOM wires are. Yeah, these are real thick. I hope my splices will cover this. Should be okay though. And you might be saying to yourself, I can't believe you're doing this. Why don't you just coil it up? Well. Hindsight being 2020, sure, uh, that's a fine thing to do. But in reality, you can always just um, go buy a, a replacement wire, um, you know, if you, if you wanted another one, or you can make your own. You can get these plugs here. It's probably cheaper just getting one of those and making your own wire. But now I've got a nice little chunk of, of very nice wire. Where do those big boy splices come from? Oh. Well, that's good. Hopefully I can find another one of those. The yellow ones are the ones I'm looking for. All right, well, there, there's that. Where do those other splices go? Well, of course, I only have one of these yellow splices, which means um, I'm gonna stop by the automotive slash home improvement uh, tomorrow morning, because it's like 10 o'clock right now. I need to get some hardware too, because the screws that I have, by the way, we're gonna talk more about this. The screws that I have are too big for the distro blocks and some of the other stuff. Hardware, little fastener, stuff like that, you're gonna, um, you're gonna need specific stuff. So if you already have a good supply on hand of hardware, you could probably build a, a go box pretty easily, but little bits and, and boops, whatever you wanna call it, you're gonna spend a little bit of time doing that. So make sure as you start putting this all together, kitting it out in your head, you know, making block diagrams or whatever, the hardware that you're gonna use, make sure that you consider all the hardware to make this all work. So yeah, I'll see you here shortly tomorrow. All right, day two, thanks for sticking around. Well, that's a little weird. Anyway, let me grab my, my loot. Uh, all right. So I picked up some more splices, an assortment of washers, this is kind of a meh, and uh, more machine screws, because we're gonna use these to mount up the rest of the stuff. I also got this, this is kind of a waste. I, I'm sure I'm not gonna like it, but one of these plastic, another one, I always have little bits and bobs. In case in point, you're not necessarily gonna leave these. I mean, this is not that bad. This could probably just go in there, but the machine screws and nuts, that's gonna go in one of these guys. These are horrible um, in storing your, your hardware. So keep that in mind, you're gonna go right there. Oh, and if you notice that down here, there's a uh, TV antenna rotor. So that loop is gonna be turning here soon. It spins. Power here, oh, we've gotta splice our line. That's right. No time to wait. I've actually got the uh, live stream coming up here in a couple of hours. So we, we just gotta keep rolling. These guys, these splices will eventually go live in this uh, box here. And I think I've got a space for it, I think, but who knows? I never have enough space. I'm assuming most of you are like that as well.
It's a forever bond. All right, we're good. So now we got our two connectors. Let's mount the power supply. That's actually, let's actually take a look at this and, and see how we want to do this. I, I was thinking about this more overnight. Uh, theoretically, I want the power out the back so that it can just like chill, kind of like that, and the power's right here. Um, that way I can connect, you know, whatever I need to. But I don't want it to get in the way. Hmm. It's going to block. It's going to be blocking the coax a little bit. But that's not that big a deal because it's actually going to go out the front. So, all right, whatever. Let me see. Okay, PowerWorks actually sells a bracket system. There are two little L brackets and some screws to go along with it. And these go into the side of the power supply like that. And then you can adjust it up or down. You get the idea. Let's get that mounted. It's always best to be fiddling around with little screws right after you uh, start drinking coffee in the morning. That's the time to do it, definitely. Woo. All right, let's see how this lines up. Hey, it's perfect. That's great. So that means I can use the venting that's out the back of this uh, instead of having to drill more holes. That's a good thing. I don't know if you guys aren't doing this, uh, but I highly recommend some kind of utility knife, um, an EDC utility knife. Pulling out your blade every time you want to make just a simple cut on a plastic container is fine, but why? There we go. Um, it's kind of a kind of a waste of an edge and your time in uh, having to resharpen and keep it all dressed. Okay, and then just position this however it is you're going to leave it in the rack. I'm going to give it a little bit of space. Bazinga. Oh, did I just say that? Oh. Turn the cameras on, man, and you say some stupid stuff. You really do, I got to tell you. My Nipix adjustable wrench. Very handy for stuff like this. Go around the back here. All right. Okay, so that's the power supply, right? Is that the power supply? Yeah, good enough. Okay. So we need to mount the distro block right there, which I'm going to offset that a bit so that the coax can get up and out of that space. So let's bring back those machine screws and see how we did. Yep. Yeah, beauty. Oh, though not a lot of... Uh, hmm, that's going to be fine. Washers. We're just going to use flat washers here. No, no springy washers because they're not going to hold. Okay. All right. So that's a power distribution sorted out from AC, but we need to go to the power gate now from uh, West Mountain Radio to do what is really the ultimate point for a lot of these go kits is that they're a bit redundant on power. Ooh, hey. Hey now, what's this? Why does my power thing have a USB port? Oh, this does firmware upgrades. That's right. I saw firmware on the West Mountain Radio uh, website. This is smaller than I thought too. Hey, fantastic. Couldn't be simpler. So you got a solar input and this lights up when you have solar. Uh, you have battery input. This lights up when you have battery. And then you have a power supply, okay? The power supply is going to be your AC power, and then you've got your out, okay? So, hypothetically, I can just mount this sucker. Maybe not like that, because it doesn't line up with the holes. Uh, I want to I mention something on this. This device is for distributing power. This device is for switching power off of mains power to battery if it were to suddenly go off or fail, or you had a gas generator and it turned off. It would switch over automatically. The input for the solar is a nicety, not required. And in fact, you will. this isn't a charge controller. So you're still gonna need to provide a charge controller input off of the panel. You could just, you know, raw dog panel directly into the power gate, but you generally probably want to have a charge controller. I'm assuming the manual probably says it's required uh, for warranty purposes, but uh, just keep that in mind. You still need to provide a charge controller. This is the configure I've decided to go with. Configuration I've decided to go with. Okay, 
let's let's take a look at what we've got so far. So we've got power to the 7300. It's going to be distributed by, and we'll we'll coil and stow a probe. We'll coil and stow to the best of my ability, um, and that'll connect to the distro block like that. Okay. Next one is the D35. Again, that's going to coil and stow and connect something like this. And this leaves a, a ton of accessories, which we're going to leverage for USB charging out the front of the case and the 12 volt cigarette lighter, a myriad of other things that'll be out the front. And then eventually I'm gonna add lighting to this as well. So we're gonna utilize that. Who's played this game before? You know you have, you know you have. The Twisty Magoo Andersons, I, I uh, did them wrong game. We've Twisty Magooed the power line. Boom, okay. So that's, that's it, really. Um, in fact, we should probably test this. Power supply is on, connected through power gate. I see a light. Power supply, green light for the power supply. And looks like we got it. Okay, so we're, um, we're part of the way there. I'm not gonna put the, this back in yet until we start fleshing out the bar up here because we're gonna have to wire stuff in series in parallel with what's going on in the back right now. And I think what I did wrong was uh, I didn't build the Anderson's wire that needs to incorporate this power connector. The power connector uses these spade type connections. Boy, these suck. Uh, no, that's not that bad. Okay, never mind. Uh, to, to have a switch that'll, that'll turn the whole rig on and off. Now, this, this is my first issue. Uh, this is a face plate, whole face plate that I bought uh, it's a server rack faceplate, but the diameter of this switch is too big for this um, for this little plate. So basically, I'm gonna have to go in here and hog it out a little bit, which I've got this massive step bit to do that. This is these things are not cheap. These step bits, so keep that in mind. This is not recommended, but I don't know what else to do. Not exactly how I wanted it to go, because if that was the case. I would have just got some stock, you know, bar stock aluminum and just worked it out that way. So you want the switch aligned like that. But let's leave it off for now. Uh, now we know this is the full, the full guy, one and an eight uh, inch diameter. But before I go, clean up a little bit. All right, to do this right, we're gonna to need to make a kind of a special jumper. So I'm gonna split the red and black wires and I'm going to make a new Anderson's connection at the end here, which will go to spade connectors. Make the black a little bit longer because I'm gonna to need, to, need to get kind of fancy here. Now black's gonna come back here and I'm gonna, I don't know, just snip off a bit. This is where it would be nice if I had the 45 amp or the 40 amp connector. Yeah, 45. Because I need to splice these two together so I can share the common or the return. Um, this isn't gonna work. This isn't gonna work. If you thought he's gonna go for those splicing connectors again, you were right. All right, so we've got a splice. Um, this Anderson's gonna be a little funky. Okay. So now I've got this weird connector, but I'll show you why. Because we've got to share the common path back. Sorry, the negative. So now when I connect my Andersons here, and then on this end, I'll have another, another connection for an Andersons, just a black. <laughs> it, it'll make sense in a second, I promise. Okay, so now we've got this guy. Let's split him off, and we've got to get those paddle connectors on. All right, so now we've got the ground right here and we've got our positive right here. And so now I just need the return or the feed for this, which is gonna be another paddle and just that red side of the Andersons and that should complete the circuit. Keep a clean workspace, they say. 
All right, so now if we did this all correctly, which I think we did, I should now have a rig here that can power off of the switch or can be controlled off of this switch. So I am going to test it like this. So we'll leave that wire bundle there. This goes in like that. One down. Now, while I'm here, let me explain what's happening. These holes, I don't know what they're for. Again, I bought this through Sweetwater. I'm assuming this is XLR. It's probably XLR ports. That's exactly what it is. So I thought, because it had an outer ring that you could also punch through, it's a punch out, that you could just go in, um, punch it out, and then that would allow you to fit you know, your cool stuff like this 12 volt cigarette lighter, you know, boom, right there. Well, kind of, sorta. It, it does if you hog it out with that step bit. Uh, that's after you go in and punch out the holes. Here's my problem. I need the, the, I want the coax connections up front. So for VHF, I want it right here so I can put an antenna if I wanted to do it that way or run a proper antenna. And then HF would be somewhere, you know, maybe next to it. I don't know, I don't care. Uh, but I, I don't know how well this is gonna work. I'm gonna try and hog out the hole here. I, I have middling expectations. There's the center punch. So basically I'm gonna need to get like a washer or some kind of plastic, possibly 3D print something. Because what, what happens with these bulkheads, right? It's just a threaded, it's like an all thread SO239, right? That's, that's kind of what it is. You put this lock nut or this nut on here and then it's supposed to go into the hole and it, it works, but there's just too much play, right? So for the time being, you know what they say, haha, <laughs> you know what people tell me in the comments all the time. The, uh, what do they say? The temporary solution often becomes the permanent one. So off, obviously what I'm doing right now is probably gonna become permanent. Sorry in advance. It looks okay, it looks okay. Yeah, I just put some JB Weld around it, it'll be all right. Uh, I do wanna pop out this one next to it though, so I just use the center punch, get on an odd angle away from where the, the two connectors are and just give it a push. Uh, that's not the one I wanted to take. There he is. There we go. And then you can just come in here and it's like a, a blank. If you've ever done uh, a home electrical box, it's just a blank. While you're building this, you don't think to yourself, uh, wow, I got a lot of space. Or you start out thinking, I got a lot of space to route all these wires. It's gonna be really easy to take care of this. Mm -mm. It's, it's not easy. <laughs> You're, uh, <laughs> you fill up the space really quickly. Plus then you gotta do the management so people don't leave bad comments on your YouTube videos. <laughs> that cable management, man, that's what gets you every time. Separates the men from the boys of the, uh, of the GoBox content online. By the way, there's a lot of really good GoBox videos. I had a blast looking at them. Uh, some of them gave me some good ideas. Obviously the lighting is where I'm lacking right now. So I'm, I'm gonna be uh, looking at a lot of those videos to figure out what I want to do for lighting. Yeah, this is super jankopotamus. These are real, these are not good. They're loose. Um, I can't really tighten them because I can get a wrench in there because they're kind of recessed in a little bit. This is a temporary solution. So just keep that in mind. Don't give me hate in the comments. All right, what's next? This is just our simple voltmeter, right? So we want to see, you know, about how we're doing. I'm going to put it right there. And the best way to do that, again, is take your center punch. Just go back and forth a couple of times. And it comes out. And while you're there, go ahead and hit the top one. And that'll break loose the outer ring. Because this is actually two. It's two pieces. You can see that. Okay, that goes in the back too. Looks pretty good so far, I must say. I'm happy about this. We've got one more power work somewhere around here. Okay, last one, at least for now. Can always add more if I wanted to. 
Last one is this PowerWorks 4 point amp hour USB charging plug, basically. It takes 12 volts in and it outputs 4.8 amps uh, for and, and 5 volts for your USB devices. So with this, I could connect my GPD Pocket 2 and effectively charge it off of my USB-C to USB-A cable. This is a, a cool... Um, this is a cool dongle because going from 12 volts, stepping it down to be able to, to be good for charging your USB devices in the field, really, really cool. Well, that blank pushed out on the first one, so I don't know what the deal is with some of these other ones. This stuff is, I mean, it's pretty beefy. So there's the blank. Now uh, we'll, we'll get back to drilling. All right, I've bodged up another cable here. You know, I'm going to check this one while I'm here because I... Uh, I did this one blind without seeing, and I want to make sure I didn't screw up the... I did. <laughs> so oddly enough, they used a gold connector on the switch. It was just the one, uh, and then two positives that were silver. At least that's how I remember seeing it. And because I think I remembered it that way, that's the way I put the rest of them in. I just assumed gold was how it went and I memorized the location on the meter when I plugged it in and then it's not the right one. So we corrected it. Well, we're at the point now where I think we can probably mount the bottom shelf back in. Also, I'm gonna clean up. <laughs> There's the side doors. So the coax I have on hand is LMR 400 that I can actually make my own cables off of. I don't have a spool or anything. I just have, you know, old cables that were a little too long. And so I, I you know, I repurposed them, shortened them up a little bit, that kind of thing. This is all uh, uh, Hammer Radio Outlet has right now. Basically, LMR 400 is what they have in the cheaper, cheaper jumpers. So I, I guess I got stuck doing LMR 400 regardless. Hindsight being 2020, I should probably just bought some more connectors to uh, make sure I always have a supply of connectors on hand and just use the coax I had. But I think I'm gonna need that for an upcoming project. Okay, so there you go. Let's go ahead and slide this in carefully. This is where you kind of need a helper. Uh, it's kind of difficult to one arm this, but you need to get the rack in. And if it's heavy, this is even harder to do. And then you gotta lift it appropriately so you can get one of the screws in. The rack comes with a bunch of screws, so don't do what I did and buy a bunch of extra screws because you likely don't need them. But let's, let's give this a go, starting with the top here. Now we have a, another shelf that goes above this, which is where I'm gonna have the speakers mounted. I picked these up uh, as a consignment from HRO, so I'm just gonna repurpose them. They have the wrong connector, so I'm gonna rewire them. That's all I'm gonna do. The wire's too long too, I'll cut that, but... And then I'm probably gonna have some kind of battery thing um, up top that I can just have a quick disconnect for something like a nine amp hour battery. But let's start plugging in wires and seeing if this all works out. For the time being, I'm gonna connect the coax up. Maybe not. You know what, I'm not. I'm gonna save that for another time. Let's flip this around and let's start connecting up our, our plugs. Because we went with Andersons, we can just now go directly into, sorry, power poles. We can go directly into the distribution block with these plugs that we have outside. We can do some uh, maintenance as we go, uh, line maintenance, but that's, well, let's just check it out first and then we'll do some zip tying. All right, we're gonna do a little check here. All right, we're plugged in and wired. This is obviously not permanent. Don't get at me in the comments, it's gonna be, Managed better, I promise. Don't believe him. He's a liar. Okay, power supply is on. Bruh. Oh, he's here. You know what? Hey. Turns out. Look at that. Look at Leah. Look. Look at. Oh. Yeah. All right, let's, uh, let's connect this up to a battery and also grab my GPD pocket and see how we do. Boop. Yes. All right, yes. Okay, so we got GPD pocket charging off USB. Now we are running AC, so I'm gonna flip this over to battery now. Let's see. 
Uh, let's turn on the 7300. We're going to leave the GPD pocket connected. I'm going to use my last bit of wire here to make myself a battery connection. Because I, I do want to use this battery. This battery has been needing a job for a while. A permanent GAOB. So he's going to be the one that goes into this. We're going to Anderson's this. Sorry, I keep saying Anderson's. You guys know what I mean, right? Power poles is the connector. All right, let's plug in battery here. And let's take our battery right here. Okay, that's pretty cool. It's uh, showing a charge indicator. So it's charging the battery while on mains power. Okay, so now hypothetically, if we have this on, the laptop is charging. The 7300 is on. If I turn off the power supply, it should auto switch to the power gate. <laughs> yes, this is cool. It's illuminated the battery light to completely on green. And we are, and you see the voltage has dropped to 13.1. So now we're getting an accurate depiction of what the battery voltage is. Let me go back to the power supply and this should kick up. Thirteen point eight. Perfect. This is perfect. This is exactly what I wanted it to do. So I just need to do some odds and ends. I need to put that shelf in, get the speakers lined up. I need to figure out a mic solution. And a lot of things are actually going to be um, stuff that I work on when it's closed up. Like where does the feed line go? Where do the batteries go? How do we maintain that in a way that isn't um, super messy? And I will do a cable management job once we get the second shelf in. And that should be a lot of fun. We should be ready to go. And then we're going to take this out in the field and do some poto with it. So that's kind of the whole point other than it being an emergency preparedness go box. I would like to mention here at the end of the video, part one at least, the reason why I went with such a large container is this one is on wheels and actually has a tow bar in the front like a ladder or a roller board suitcase. This is a, a nice size. It's, it's big, but it's not too big. And it's easy to carry around with the side handles and the roller wheels. So you can easily drag it to where you need to go. Cool. So as I'm wrapping up this part one video, I wanted to answer a question that I know some of you who've been watching me for a long time are probably going to ask yourself or post in the comments. Josh, you've always been kind of like, not anti, but not really pro go box. What changed your mind? Pretty simple. That changed my mind. The fact that my 7300 has been kind of replaced as my main radio with the 7610 means that I have a fantastic portable radio that's just sitting here and it's not going to get used. That's not acceptable to me uh, with a radio like the 7300. It needs to get out in the field or just do something. It's, it's now been freed, if you will. The shackles have been removed from the shack and now I can get outside and have some fun. So I'm very excited with this. Uh, this is gonna be something that we can take in the field for doing POTA just daily, you know, a daily weekend type thing. Or this could be your full weekend kit right here. Get your antenna, whatever you're planning on using, some kind of wire antenna, and you should be ready to go. Throw in a solar panel, you're all set. Yeah, I'm really, really excited by this. This, is, uh, this came out better than I expected. Uh, the only thing I think I need to do is figure out some lighting. If you have comments on that, you have some suggestions, I'd love to hear it. Maybe something with like a gooseneck, we can tie it in here and it would come up and out. So that you had like a little bit of workspace lighting. That would be awesome. I really do want to hear your comments on this so that we can, uh, we can further, you know, develop this box as we go. But so far, I'm, I'm really, really liking this. So the next time you see it, hopefully it's going to be a little bit more polished. I'll figure out what's going on with these feed line connectors and we'll get out in the field. Thanks so much for watching the Hammerio Crash Course. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed this, I'd appreciate the thumbs up. It tells the YouTube algorithm that this video is good. More people should watch it and it'll boost its traffic up that way. That's the best thing you can do to say you enjoyed it or that you want to support the channel. So thanks so much for doing that. And as always, subscribe because I do live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and I do Ham Nation every other Wednesday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You've been watching the Hammerio Crash Course. Thanks so much for doing so, and I'll talk to you later. See ya.